Hey everyone, Matthew Dale here. One of the biggest hurdles that we have to get over as a guitar player is memorizing all five of our pentatonic shapes. Now, typically what that might look like is, okay, here's a minor pentatonic. We'll call that shape one, and then there's shape two, shape three, shape four, shape five, and then we're back to shape one. But there's a better way. Rather than categorize these as just arbitrary shape one, shape two, shape three, whatever, let's actually connect them to something else that we use all the time on guitar, chord shapes. You can hit the link below in the description to grab my chord shape into scale shape cheat sheet, which will really help the information I'm gonna share in this video to sink in. Now this is a little bit derived from the cage system, but often uh, that can be confusing in and of itself, so I'm gonna do my best to simplify it here for you. So if we just take our typical C, A, G, E, and D shapes from our open chords, we can apply these to any given chord up the neck in that same order. And here's what I mean. If I start with C, the next chord shape that is gonna come up as I ascend the neck is gonna be an A shape, C, A, G, E, D. So this is what the A shape of C looks like. Notice I'm saying the A shape, not an A chord, it's just the A shape because it's derived from what an A open chord looks like. So that chord looks like this, derived from that A chord. You can almost imagine my first finger being a capo here, and then I'm putting the rest of the chord down just like I would capo and play an A chord. Now the next chord shape isn't really a very common chord shape that we play. I personally love it. It's the G bar chord shape. So just like a G down here, and if you wanna find these a little bit easier, just play all of your open chords without the use of your first finger, reconfigure your fingers so that you play and you have your first finger available to do the barring action. So this is what the G shape of C looks like. The next chord shape is gonna be E, the E bar chord shape, and then the D bar chord shape. Now, this is step one. You wanna be able to play these chord shapes before you tackle your pentatonic scales to make things make sense. Now, why is this an advantage? All of our pentatonic scales are two notes per string. Right? All of our chord shapes are maximum one note per string. So, only got one note on each string because that's the way chords work, right? There as well, there as well, there as well, and then there as well. So if you can master these chord shapes going up the neck, the only thing you have to do to make these chord shapes pentatonic shapes is add one more note on each string. Let's see how this would work in real time. Rather than start with the open C, I'm gonna start with this A shape of C. And in my diagram, I'm gonna put the chord notes in a different color than the scale notes. So you can see how we're adding to the chord shape to create the scale shape. So here's this A shape of C. And now to fill in the blank, one note added on the A string, one note added on the D string, one note added on the G, one note added on the B, and then one note added on the high E string. Let's go ahead and move to the G shape. This is the shape that most people are familiar with, but they don't often see the G chord around it. Here's our chord note, added note, chord note, chord note, added note, chord note, added note, chord note. Still a chord note, but it's kind of tough to grab that one, I guess, if we're making like a G chord proper with our bar chord, but I never play this chord. Added note and then another chord note. Let's take a look at the E shape. Here's our chord note, added note. Technically a chord note, but we don't play it in this shape, so I'm gonna leave it out. Here's a chord note, added note, chord note, added note, chord note, chord note, added note, chord note, added note. And then we have one more, our D shape. We're already there, all five of our shapes. Chord note, added note, chord note, but we don't play it in the shape, so it's an added note. Chord note, added note, chord note, added note, chord note. 
Now let's go and let's add in the C chord shape of C, which looks like this if we move it out of position. Again, if I just think of this without utilizing my first finger to play this chord shape, I can play that as a bar chord anywhere up the neck. So here's our chord note, added note, chord note, chord note, added note, chord note, added note, chord note, added note. All five of our shapes just like that. It can be that easy if we understand that we can build musical knowledge on top of itself. What we often do, but we really want to avoid, is we learn islands of information, right? So, okay, I know my chord shapes. Uh, and then over here, now I know my scale shapes. Okay, well now over here, I know my arpeggio shapes. And then, you know, these chord shapes uh, don't relate to these chord shapes. I have different chord shapes, jazz chords. And then these scale shapes, like pentatonics, are different from these scale shapes that are major and minor and maybe modes. We don't want to learn islands of information. We want to stack the information that we learn onto itself so that we remain connected with what we're doing. Now there's one more category that we can look at to help us better understand these shapes up the neck. The C chord shape and the A chord shape share the same string that the root note is on. So we have two shapes that start from the A string. And then we have the G chord and the E chord shapes starting from the E string. So we have two shapes that start from the E string. And then we have one, if we're doing our math, two plus two is four, we have one remaining. One chord shape, the D chord shape, which starts life on the D string. So another way to categorize and learn how to connect the dots between these chord shapes and these scale shapes. Two from the A string, two from the E string and one on the D string. Don't forget to grab the chord shape into scale shape cheat sheet that I have so you can learn this even quicker. Let me know if this was all helpful for you. My name is Matthew Dale and I will see you on the next one.